Hi everyone, this is Sharon. In today's tutorial, we are going to make this fun and very easy to make little folio. I made it from a single sheet of paper and I just added some fabric and lace. I laced it up with some twine and if we unwrap it, we can open it up to the inside. The what makes this so easy and unique is I used one piece of twine for these little kind of loose belly bands on the inside. And it also serves as the wrap and the tie for the folio. So with this method, these strings, I just tucked in some writing paper and this little faux calling card. But I think these would really be fun for a Happy Meal piece where you could just stuff these really with whatever you wanted take your string pull it tight around whatever you've got in there and then to close it up you just flip it over this way and flip it over this way then i take this string that i've looped through some holes and i'll show you how we did that and that one i just simply wrap around two times and then this string i wrap around once and then tie it and like I said, you can stuff tons of things in there because you've got a nice long string on it. So we will get started on the one that we will be making today. Okay, I pulled some papers and digitals for the folio that we'll make today. I was anxious to use this Autumn Rose Kit from the Paper Cameo. It's just gorgeous. And so all of these digitals come from that kit. Um, and I just wanted to mention the digital that I used for this sample one is from Everlasting Journals. And I'll put links to both of those kits down in the description. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm using this picture or this image for my base. Um, now, if you want to make this really quick, you could just double side print this. I am going to uh, use this page from an old 1800s bookkeeping textbook. I just love the fonts and the script on there. So I am going to glue that to my back side. Um, that will make it a little thicker too uh, to give it a little bit more strength. I printed this on 26 pound paper. Now depending on what you like, I would suggest probably minimum 26 pound and if you're just doing a front and back print, probably even put it on cardstock just to make it a little sturdier because you know, if you stuff it full of things, <laughs> you may need that extra thickness. So my first step then is to, well, before I do that, let's just talk about the other images. So I also pulled these. I wanted to put this beautiful lady on the back side of my folio. Um, the only problem I ran into is she really blends into the background of this sheet. So I took one of the other images, this beautiful damask pattern, and I scaled it down. This is a full-size sheet in the kit. And I think if I just mat her on there and layer that up, then um, that will make her stand out really nicely on the paper. So I'm gonna set these aside for now. And um, I will go glue these two pieces of paper together and then I will be back. Okay, I have my front side glued to my back side. I just used a glue stick for that. One thing you will probably want to do is to make sure if you are gluing um, two sheets together to let this dry thoroughly before you start folding it um, because the creases will just be crisper and nicer. Um, I can feel my glue is just a little bit damp yet, but I've got the camera rolling, so I'm just going to go for it. Um, so our next step is to fold this and um, one thing I wanted to mention if you are following along and you want to make something of a similar size the length of my paper is now I trimmed it down a little bit when I got the two sheets together so it's ten and a quarter going across this way and a seven and a quarter going down this way so I am going to fold from this side so I'm going to take this side and fold it over and I think I want it somewhere in this vicinity. Now, if we look at our example, 
um, you can see that this there's like about a half inch gap between here and here. So I'm folding this in and then I'm going to fold this side down and leave just a little bit of a gap in there. So something like that. And so this is my front side where I'm going to have my tie. And then this is my back side. Um, let's see. Let's check how wide this is. Okay, four and a quarter. So it's ending up to be a total of four and a quarter inches wide this way once it's folded. So my next step will be to adhere my lady to this side. So what I'm going to do is glue her to this background paper and then I'll just kind of tear around it with my tear ruler to get it to the size that I want. Okay, I put some glue on the back side of my lady and I'm just going to glue her down onto this background paper. And then I've got a kind of a jagged edge tear ruler and I think I prefer a jagged edge around the back. So I'm just going to maybe a little more than a quarter inch. Maybe I better go a little less. About a quarter inch, I would say. And we'll just tear that off. See how she fits on our folio. So I think she can go on there something like that. Now I know I'm going to have my string across the middle and I probably don't want it going across her face so maybe I'll put her toward the top a bit more. Something like that. I think that will look good so I'll glue her on there. Okay, I like her there. Make sure I got her on straight. Okay, I think that will work fine. Now, our next step is to finish off our edges and maybe add a little bit of lace or something to this flap. Um, so if we go back to this one, you'll see I reinforce these edges with some washi tape on that side and then on this side. Um, I think instead of using washi tape, I will use some of the paper from this uh, Autumn Rose kit. So here is that same background that I used behind the lady picture, um, only I kept it full scale size. So what my thought is, is to cut a couple of strips that I can just glue along the ends um, of this flap and then along the end of this piece here. And that'll reinforce our edges and also um, give it a little bit more interest. So my thought is I want this about three quarters of an inch wide and I'm going to double it, put it on both sides. So that would be an inch and a half. And then I also want to fold it under on the edge um, instead of leaving the raw edge. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that. So I think that should give me another half or another full inch that I need to add on to there. So I'm going to cut this about two and a half inches wide. Okay, I have two strips that are two and a half inches wide. So what I'm going to do is fold them in half like this, the long way, and then... I'm going to open that up and fold this edge in again. Uh, I did say three quarters of an inch, so I gotta bring that back a little bit, I think, to about a half inch. So it's going to be about a quarter inch from the fold. You don't have it doesn't have to be exact. Um, and this side. Okay, so then if we fold that, we've got this reinforced edge here on both sides. And then that is going to get glued right over the top of this edge. 
So we'll have that showing on that side and then we'll also have it showing on that side. So I will fold my other strip as well and then glue these on. Okay, so I've applied glue all the way around on the back side of this strip, and then I'm just going to kind of fold it into a V, sort of, and then stick it right to the edge, and then just press it down. Make sure I have it halfway decent straight. <laughs> okay, so I've, that's how it looks on that side, and that's how it looks on that side. And then I will take my other strip that I folded and attach that to the side. Okay, I've got my glue on the back side. And again, I'm just going to push this along the edge and then glue that down. Okay, now I made these extra long and I'm just going to cut those sides off. Okay, so now we are, we've got our base all put together. And the next step will be to round these corners because that's what I prefer. Um, you can keep them square if you like, but I'm going to round this, these two corners and then these two corners. And this is the corner rounder that I have and I think the medium is what I'm looking for. So let's just punch that and see what it looks like. Yeah, I think, do I want the medium or the large? Yeah, I think the medium. Kind of softens those up a little bit. All right, so our next step will be to take a hole punch and punch some holes. And I used eighth inch, an eighth inch hole punch, so I'm using my crocodile that side. <clears throat> so if we look at our example, it's kind of confusing with all the string here, but um, if we pull this completely out, you can see I've got one hole here and here on each side. And then I've got a hole here and here, so there's two there and then two there. And how I accomplished that was to fold these and punch these two and these two. So we've got the two that will be punched together and then I'll go in and punch this one on the edge of that side and then this one on the edge of this side. And hopefully they will all line up <laughs> without measuring or marking. I might mark. I might do some marks. I think that will help. So let me get a pencil. And I need to get a ruler. So if you're not a measurer, you can just go for it. But I tend to measure everything, so... Um, so we're at seven and a quarter. So if I want it down the middle, I'm going to go three and five eighths. Hopefully my math is correct. Um, these are just going to be guys. It's actually not where I'm going to put my hole. Three and five eighths. And then three and five eighths. All right, and then three and five eighths. That'll help me get them pretty close. Okay, so let's punch this one. I've got my little guide set on here to punch about three eighths of an inch from the edge. Um, so that's what I'm going to use on all of these. And that's why I said this hole I don't have exact, or this mark I don't have exactly three eighths of an inch in, but. I'm just going to use that as a guide to kind of know where to put my hole. Okay, and then 
Like I said, I will keep it folded and do both holes at once. So. And then we'll come to this side and keep this folded and punch these two. And then I've got one more to do on this flap. Okay, so I've got my six holes punched. I think you can see those on camera. And now we just take our string and start feeding that through. Now, let me go measure my string because I didn't do that ahead of time. I'll let you know how long it is. Okay, my string is 54 inches long. A bit longer than I realized. <laughs> Uh, but by the time you do all the wrapping and everything, let's see. Um, yes, I want to. So I'm going to start on this flap from the outside and go in. And hopefully this is stays pointy enough for me to get it fed through without any kind of needle or anything. So now I'm going under there, and you can see that creates our first belly band. Then I'm going to come back through the side and back up. Now I am working on this upside down, if you noticed, but that's okay. It'll work either way. Back down. Basically, you're just threading up and down and up and down. And then this last one will just come out to the outside again. Okay, let's turn this around the right side. So, this is my flap. I got the string coming from the outside going in, and I'm just going up and down. And I've got two larger belly bands here and one mini one if you wanted to try to put something in there. <laughs> um, and that's it. We have our string on there. And that's it for construction. So, pretty simple, pretty quick, and easy. And of course, as always, you can embellish these to your heart's content. Um, I am just going to grab a few pieces of ephemera that I already put together. And as you can see, we can just pile in a whole bunch of things behind those ropes. And my favorite part is just pulling that tight and having everything cinched in there nicely. Now, I you're going to have to play with your ends to see... Um, how much you need on each side. I think I need to pull mine back this way a little bit if I'm eyeballing this a little bit to get my wrap the right length. So let's try this. I'm cinching and tightening. Okay, and then I'm going to close this flap and close this flap. Then I'm going to take this and wrap it around two times. And then I'm going to take this and wrap it around the other way once. And then I'm just going to tie this up. And we've got it all wrapped up. Now, one thing I said was, if you'll remember from this one, I had some fabric and lace on there. And what I thought I maybe would do to embellish this before we go is to add um, like this little doily piece. I think that might look nice on there. So I'm just going to take that and glue it on. And for this, I am just going to use um, some art glitter glue to glue that on. I'm just going to add some around the solid center part. And then I might be hanging it across this edge, so I'm just not going to put the glue to the edge there. Um, but I'll just dot it around the outside. And then come in here a little bit and not take it all the way to this edge here. And then I'm just going to place that on there. And that is it. You can have lots of fun decorating your flap, obviously. 
So I sure hope you got some inspiration from our little tutorial today, making this fun folio. Uh, they really come together quite easily. Um, so thanks for coming along with me today. And until next time, bye-bye. Okay, I lied. I'm back. <laughs> I was really curious to see what this might look like with a wider ribbon strung through it rather than the twine. So I made one more with this seam binding ribbon and I wrapped it the same way, but instead of the little round holes, I used the slotted punch to make some wider holes for my ribbon. And then instead of reinforcing this whole edge, I just added some fabric tabs. And I think that'll do a really nice job of re reinforcing where the ribbon is. So I strung it the same way. Um, and on the inside, just for illustration purposes, I added some ephemera in there. And I really like the way this wider ribbon works in there. And then for my back side, I used this really pretty Italian painting. I embellished with an extra little bit of collaging on the top. I really like the way the ribbon looks coming through the back side and kind of peeking through those corners. And we wrap it up in the same way as the other one. So I wrap that one around twice and this one around once. And one thing I wanted to mention also on the, on any of these really, but if we look at this one that I made on camera earlier, um, I just added a little bit extra embellishment, a label and some washi tape that was looking a little too plain to me. But I wanted to mention that if you don't wanna tie a bow on the front, you can just take these two strings and then wrap them around together a couple of times and then tuck it in over on the side. And that's another look as well. So now it really is bye-bye till next time. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much.